and welcome back to the OMG MotoGP podcast, your Japanese Grand Prix preview edition. I'm your host, Renita Vermeulen, and joining me is our very own MotoGP sensei, Mr. Keith Hewen. Keith, we're going to jump straight in and I've got one question for you straight away. Mategi, the circuit is very stop and go, tight hairpins, hard breaking circuit. Is there going to be another Ducati domination again this weekend? I think you can say almost absolutely. But KTM are quick here as well. KTM stop go bikes work very, very well. So I think we're going to be watching out for a Costa on the gas gas. I think that's going to be an interesting one as well. But like everything with Mategi, it's a funny old place. You know, it's, it's, it's had a couple of mountain tops cut off of it and it's circled around. But weather is a major issue here. Um, I've had a quick look at the, the weather forecast. It looks like it's going to be dull as ditch water as it normally is. Um, but rain-wise, they're, they're only sort of predicting 40% possibilities of precipitation. Um, so we'll have to wait and see regarding that. But that weather does have a major factor in it. I mean, the man for here, for me, always is Mark Marquez. I mean, it's a Honda track. It's owned by Honda. The Honda Museum is in the front. If you ever go to Motegi, great place to go to. Um, you've got an Australian bar, actually. The, the, I can't remember what it's called now. The, the Duck down in Mito. Um, uh, which oh, we the always Drunken Duck? Drunken Duck, run by an Australian in Mito. It's like an Australian bar with a Japanese twist. Um, highly I, recommended. Um, by you. I saw that on Senna Aegeus's, uh Instagram earlier today. He was there. And then I saw that he was with the owner, looked Australian. So it's funny that you mentioned that. <laughs> well, he's good at Australian fare in there. I mean, Erta, again, Mike Trimby and co, they used to have a permanently booked table in there. Mike Trimby at the head of the table from Erta, of course. And uh, where I miss that. I do miss not not being there for, for those reasons. But back to Mategi, weather can make a major difference. Mark Marquez around there is absolutely superb. The Ducati is a stop-go motorbike, providing it don't go bang like it did last week. I'm sure they're working on that. As far as Ducati is going very rare, actually, failure from Ducati. Um, so Mark Marquez is in my mix for this week, absolutely. You know, Brad Binder, Jack Miller, both had good rides on KTM last year there as well. So it's, like you say, stop-go, it's the place that used to have to have high mass brakes fitted and all sorts of different things compared with the rest of the year, purely and simply because it's so hard on the brakes. You know, remember the Vizioso versus Marquez around there, you know, Honda versus Ducati. They were fantastic days. There's no doubt in that. Um, so, yeah, short answer to your question, Ducati will be right there. It's funny when you were talking about Marquez then, and it just took me back. Obviously, he's won so many of his world championships at this track, so it means a lot to him. But also, I think Casey won his world championship back in 2017 here as well. So it's such a rich motorsport history steeped circuit. And then you just mentioned about the, the Honda uh, Museum there and whatnot. I've never been, but when you go there, you see the fans, you see the passion for the sport, and it's so exciting coming from Indonesia where there was a lot of fans and, and it seemed hugely passionate as well. It seems like going to Japan is like a step up again. Different different culture, different way of thinking. I mean, like, you know, this is going to sound very rude of me because I, I am the typically bad-tempered, bad-mannered foreigner in a country of, of manners, effectively. Um, particularly when I'm driving. Um, and when you've got to get out of there and you've got to get to catch a plane on the other side of Tokyo, if you're going to Haneda, um, it's like a nightmare. But the Japanese are so incredibly polite. If you put your lights on and toot your horn, you can just flash down the outside of everybody and and, and, and you kind of they make way for you. Uh, it, it's a diff completely different way of thinking. And it's a beautiful country as well. Japan, yeah, we all think of Tokyo and, and, and the like and... and you know, 25 pounds for a beer in a bar or whatever it might be, but um, and do your own currency conversions if you want. Um, but it is one of those ones where when you get out into the country, it is completely unique. I mean, the Honda Hotel that's there, I always think it's like that Hotel California, um, Eagles track, you know, you can check out, but you can never leave because it's this place on the hill that looks over the track. I never, ever want to stay there because it's the most boring place in the world. There is nothing to do apart from the museum and look out over the track. And I always wonder whether, the, you know, the, 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 they, when you stay there, that's it. You're there for the rest of your life. I, you know, Honda obviously used to stay there, all of their team, but uh, we used to get out and, uh, and have a bit more fun than that when we were, were there. I mean, we could have a world champion this weekend, David Alonso in Moto3, of course. He's, he's well on track for that. So it looks like there will be a world championship it's a tenuous link to what you just said, um, but it looks like we might have a, a world championship um, decided this weekend. Could not really. He's 97 points in front with 
um, five rounds, including this one to go. So it, it should be a, 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 a foregone conclusion. Um, the other thing as well, the, the rookie of the year should be signed up with uh, MotoGP, bouncing from Moto3 to MotoGP, obviously. Drum roll, uh, it's yeah. Pedro. <laughs> it couldn't be anybody else, really, could it, Acosta? Um, but I think Acosta, I think Acosta around here on a KTM could be the fly in the ointment for Ducati. I, I genuinely do. He's come off the back of some good results at Lombok. Um, completely different style of racetrack. Um, there's nothing, you know, it's, it's, it is stop-start. With some fast stuff in there as well. They put some uh, new curbs in in a, a couple of the corners as well to try and keep people off the off the curbs. Um, be interesting to see how they uh, how grippy they are, or how lumpy they are, or or how the riders respond to them. Um, so that's really the only alteration as far as the track is concerned. I think it's funny that you just mentioned Pedro. I was listening to the press conference actually just before we logged on here, and he was saying, talking to Matt Burt, how. He feels really confident coming into this weekend and he believes that the RC16 is really suited to this track. So I'm hearing your thoughts on it, hearing what Pedro says, it makes me think, yeah, you know what? I think we could potentially see him fighting for a podium if not being on that podium this weekend, if the weather holds out. Because if the weather, if it's raining on Saturday and we get a mixed grid for qualifying, who knows where people are going to start, right? Well, I'm going to go for a, you know, I'm going to go for a first ever win for Acosta. Um, Ooh. I, just, I just feel that he's he's kind of gone through that dip in the middle of the season that rookies have, that everybody has to to some extent. And I just feel that KTM, Marquez has mentioned in, in most of the pieces I've seen that the KTM is strong there. Um, yeah, okay, it, it might be the gas gas version. It might not be the full on. You know, KTM factory factory motorbike. We know that Binder and Miller went well there last year. Uh, when did Binder? He only finished second. I mean, Jorge Martin won them both last year. Binder had a second in the in the sprint. Um, they were there or thereabouts. Weather makes a massive difference, but I think Acosta, he's looking for his first win. I felt it was going to come this year. We all did because of the way he started his season. Um, easier to be said than to be done. Um, but maybe I mean Japan is one of those places where you know you can you can pull off something a bit unusual there sometimes. Let's touch on Pecco as well because if my calculations are correct, he hasn't won a Grand Prix race since Germany. Yeah. So how do you think he's feeling going into this weekend? Is the pressure starting to get to him now for the championship title? Well, he'll be aware of the pressure. I mean, Jorge Martin, he'll be aware that Jorge Martin comes to this place as a favourite because of these double win there last year. So obviously, you know, when you turn up at a racetrack that you've had good races at, you know, I think I predicted Acosta for a podium or Acosta to be somewhere like last time out of Lombok because he'd won there on Moto2 before. You know, there are, there are some tracks and, and these things are sort of etched in your brain. You, you come to a racetrack and you're feeling really, really enthusiastic, happy to be there just that one degree more than maybe normal. So I think Jorge Martin starts with the psychological advantage of, of, of last year. Um, Pecco Bagnaia is a, is a, is a, is a weapon. He's in, you know, I think we underestimate that man at your peril. I think um, he's going to put together some good races this weekend. I think he's going to be there or thereabouts. Uh, mistakes is what it's all about this year. Who makes the most mistakes? And both of them are guilty of that. Uh, we'll see whether in these critical last five rounds we're, we're going to have one from from either Pecco or, or Jorge Martin. I mean, uh, you know, Bastianini and, and Marquez are out of the championship really now, points-wise. I think they can still do it mathematically, but um, certainly not physically. Uh, so I think, you know, yes, Pecco will be there or thereabouts. Podiums for Pecco, but um, it, it's... At some stage, he's going to get to the point where he's a few points behind like he is now. Was it 23 or something? I can't remember. Um, but he is going to have to throw caution to the wind. There's going to come a time where this championship turns in favour of Jorge Martin, who, who is prepared to risk things perhaps just a degree more at the moment. Um, and I think that Pecco will get, if he's still behind, he will get to a point where he's got to throw caution to the wind and just ride the thing. Um, or he's going to lose the World Championship. Um, and that's it. Sorry if you can hear my phone buzzing in the background. <laughs> I was wondering who was calling you. Well, <laughs> Japanese Grand Prix, let's talk about 
Firstly, let's talk about our Japanese rider Taka Nakagami. It is his official last race as a MotoGP rider in the MotoGP grid on home soil. So that's got to be emotional for him. Obviously, he hasn't had the dream career that I'm assuming he's wanted to become MotoGP world champion, but he's had a really good run with Honda, Honda Asia backing him, Itametsu. It must be tough for him going into this knowing it's his last Grand Prix on home soil. It will be because they mentor um, everybody as well. The Japanese right, Ayogura obviously is, is is the man that's looking like Moto, Moto 2 world champion going forward. Um, you know, they, they've got a lot to support. The, the Japanese support that you get there is remarkable. I mean, it come rain or shine or freezing cold, whatever it is, horizontal wind, um, they're on the terraces. In their, they they support people for life. It appears to me, you know, they they whoever it might be, and they're very they're not um, too nationalistic. Is that the word I'm looking for? I don't know, but they they, they don't just support their own country's riders. Yeah, there there will be a fan club for. Pecco, there'll be a fan club for Jorge, there'll be a fan club for, for all these different guys. But obviously, Takanakagami is, is a favourite son. Um, Ayogoro gets a lot of support here as well, uh, bearing in mind he's moving to MotoGP next year. So that will be that will have some momentum as well. I, I think there's it's it's a it's a remarkably different Grand Prix. It's one that, I, you know, you walk... Me and Julian used to walk up onto the terraces and look at the fans areas and stuff like that. And, even the, the goods that they have for sale in the merchandise areas are, are just, it's all quite different to what you would expect anywhere else in the world. Um, and I quite enjoy that. But I'm sure that, that TAC has been around a fair old while now. Um, and being it's the last ever you know, Japanese Grand Prix for him, he'll have a tear in his eye. There's no, how could you not be emotional about it? If it was a, you know, last time you were racing at Silverstone for a British rider, you would, you would feel that to, a, so, to some extent. But I think, amplify that when it comes to a Japanese rider in Japan. What about the Japanese manufacturers this weekend? Obviously, Honda, Yamaha. Fabio seems to be coming to grips with the bike that he's got and the understanding, I guess, maybe riding around some problems a bit more. In the the press conference I was listening to earlier, I said that he feels like Yamaha, since the Zano test, has improved on the braking front edge grip how do you think Fabio is going to go? And then how do you think that the Japanese manufacturers are going to go this weekend? Well, I mean, it's an unknown one, isn't it, really? I mean, at the end of the day, there's still a few horsepower down on, on the likes of the Yamaha and the KTMs. And I think that is going to be the one that tells here. Um, you have got stop-start corners and quite long straights. And the opportunities, all you've got to do is is level someone into a corner and you've got the job done. So you can be riding brilliantly on Yamaha um, and have all the corner speed in the world. But if you've got a big fat Ducati with wings stuck all over it, you know, on the racing line right in the middle of it, you're not going to do anything with it, are you? And and all you've got to do on a Ducati is level the Yamaha into a corner. And once you're on the outside of a rider, it's very rare that you're going to um, beat him. Um, unless, of course, you're Mar Marquez. <laughs> Looking back yeah. over the years, <laughs> the amount of times he's managed to stick that Honda where it shouldn't have been um, it was always quite amusing. But uh, I think at the end of the day... It, it, Ducati and KTM are going to be the leading manufacturers here. Um, I don't know. I mean, for me, again, Mar Marquez, you know, he's he's also got an easier life here this this week. I mean, normally he, you know, every minute of his day when he's in Japan is taken up with PR, with events, with you know, commitments corporately and the like. Um, he hasn't going to have that. He's not going to have that with Grassini here as well. So he's going to have time to. It's going to be like a whole new environment for Mark Marquez here. And it'd be interesting to see how, how that translates on to his performance on track. We know he's going to be there or thereabouts, but will it, will it just give him that edge to, to pull off a win um, here? I, I mean, he's, the other thing, he's got nothing else to lose. So it's, it could be a win it or bin it scenario, to be frank. <laughs> I love that you've gone from earlier saying Pedro could potentially win. Now you're saying Marquez could potentially win. Oh, no, so... I'm going to have them in different, different races. I'm going to have oh, them one okay, each. Okay, sorry. We'll save that for the, um, for the prediction, yeah, for the shall prediction. we? <laughs> <laughs> we'll save well, for the I prediction wanna... so I can change my mind in a minute or two again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for us Aussies, I need to shout out Remy Gardner, who's wildcarding this weekend for the Yamaha test team. Obviously, Cal Crutchlow, he's still injured with that hand. But like I said earlier, big home race for the Japanese manufacturers, but also massive for Remy Gardner because he's 
literally like halfway through five races now back to back because he's come straight from World Superbikes. Um, where were they? Cremona. And then this weekend in Japan. And then he's going back, I think, to Estoril the following weekend. So that's a big jump from Remy to go Superbike, Remy GP back, back to Superbike. Well, one could say let's hope he doesn't end up in jail again this year then, can't we? <laughs> what? Oh. Okay, story no. time with Keith. You need to you, elaborate. You have to, remember, you have to remember back a bit when he was driving a hire car that he probably shouldn't have been and his dad got a bit tricky with um, with the local police and ended up in jail for a week over there. <laughs> they wouldn't let him out. <laughs> you know what Wayne's like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Remy Remy kind of got off and, um, and and managed to to get racing, but um, it was all a bit silly a few years ago when uh, when Wayne ended up spending a little bit time in uh, in whatever the equivalent of his Her Majesty's um, pleasure, and uh, and and so uh, I, it was a quite a long time he was he was hooked up in jail for over there. So hopefully Remy won't get tangled up with that. And I, I dare say um, <laughs> Wayne won't be won't be over there supporting him this this week. I would suggest. <laughs> I don't even know if he's allowed in the country. Wow. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> I was not expecting what? that to come out in you'll today's podcast. That, you'll have to look that one up. So I was talking about muscle memory for the likes of Jorge Martin as a race winner. I should think Remy's muscle memory is about trying to bail his dad out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not the best memories of Japan then for Remy. <laughs> Now you've got some news regarding uh, the MLAV team. Yeah, I mean it's it's, it's Michael Laverty, of course, MLAV, and the, the what's he called Fleet Safe. I'll throw you down somewhere. Fleet Safe Honda, as it as it is now. That's the the headline on the on it. Obviously, with Eddie O'Shea. I mean, bless him, Eddie O'Shea. He's had to wait for his birthday to go to Lombok for the first time to race in the Moto Three class for the first time. Breaks his hand. Yeah, oh, bless him. Yeah, terrible. Really annoying. Then they were bringing in a, a guy called Cormac Buchanan, who's a, a New Zealand licensed uh, rider, um, for this weekend. But I think that that he suddenly got a rush of thinking to himself, well, you know, it's a one-off ride. You know, uh, if I if I don't go quite as good as I would I expect to go, then maybe that will jeopardise my planning for next year because he hasn't signed a deal for next year. He wants to sign, obviously, for for the Fleet Safe team, Michael Laverty, but. Michael's talking to to other riders as well. It's a bit... MLAV, I always feel a bit sorry for, for Michael in a way. I mean, not sorry, sorry, not sorry. Um, in that, you know, he's been committed to running British riders. Um, we do not have the pool of, of riders here of that quality, of that standard yet. Um, there are some great little British riders coming on, but unfortunately the jump is so huge into Grand Prix um, they'll be destroyed mentally if they don't have the build-up that you need to, to get to this level. And Michael has been committed by Erta, by Dorna, to running British riders. Um, I feel that they should release him from that um, commitment so that he can put, not a name maybe, but he can dip into the pool of Spanish riders, Italian riders, you know, whatever it might be that, that Michael's looking at, so that he can run one British rider perhaps, whoever that might be, and a another, somebody else. Um, because I think that Michael's team needs results. If you're going to get headline sponsors, if you're going to continue in this in this money-sapping environment, you need to get results. You need to have at least the hope of results. You know, Ogden has been there for a while now, and, and I think has shown great promise, but he seems to have leveled out a little bit at the moment. There's Whether that's a team thing, and I think when you bring another rider in that's, that's got a bit more of an established, perhaps, resume, um, that then shows whether it's a team problem or whether it's a rider problem, why you're not getting over that that hump, that plateau of performance. So I think that Michael Laverty needs to be freed off to be able to sign somebody, uh, either somebody that's got a bit more experience. Bear in mind, bloody hell, they've got a 10-year limit nowadays, haven't they, with Moto3? So you've got to be 18 or above, but if you get to 28 at the start of the year, you can't, you know... The, the McPhee syndrome and, and various others, Efren Vasquez, if you want to go back to good Moto3 riders. Some don't want to progress to Moto2. Some don't get an opportunity to go to MotoGP. So Moto3 was a good place for them to be. But now if you're 28, you don't, you, you know, it's always been the case. You you you, you have to move. You have to get out. Um, so I think Ogden has had a fair crack of the whip with MLAV. I think MLAV needs a fair crack of the whip with the general rider's pool. He should be allowed to sign 
somebody of another nationality to A, see how good they are compared with Scott Ogden, B, how good the team is compared with everybody else's team. You know, I always think the the Scott Dick, uh, the um, Jake Dixon uh, scenario for me when they brought in Pacini when Scott had that bang on when Scott when Jake had that bang on the head um, and they brought in Pacini Mario Pacini who was a good yardstick for any motorbike uh, performance that he could pr- produce and Jake had been saying to the team look I don't think this bike's quite right whatever the reasons were da 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 da, da I can't get involved in that because I can't I don't know um, and it was proved. Pacini got on the bike and he was finishing nowhere. And so suddenly the team began to listen to Jake Dixon. And Jake Dixon is now a Grand Prix winner and has proved that that his capability, given the right kind of setup. And again, everything nowadays is within thousands of a second. Motor 3, Motor 2, Motor GP. You know, you're working on the tiniest, tiniest margins now and looking for the tiniest, tiniest improvements whether that be ride or whether that be bike. And sometimes you can't tell which one it is. Um, so I, my bandwagon soapbox I'm standing on at the moment is MLAV should be allowed to run whatever nationality rider he deems right for the team and for performance moving forward into 2025. That would be my my wish for next year. I think just after we had Michael on the podcast earlier this year and listening to him talk, especially the struggles for getting sponsorship and things being that it is classified as a world championship, but obviously majority of it is based in Europe. The struggles that he has maybe having that non English writer, if it is Spanish or Italian or French or whatever, maybe a different nationality might also just help him with those sponsorship struggles that he was saying, like you said, it's just a money pool where it's constantly going out maybe to have come in help everyone with less stress on their shoulders right so maybe then that rider and scott can get better results i think the problem is as well it's a british grand prix i mean it's quite interesting seeing somebody said oh he only had sixty thousand people at lombok lombok is one of the hardest tracks to get to it's on an island you've got to take two or three flights to get there it's quite tricky they had sixty thousand people there on the sunday <clears throat> and i think i said last time when we were talking about it 60,000 people at Silverstone, they think they've had a win-win situation. Um, and, you know, a lot of it is based on the fact that, that Dorna and co want to promote British riders. So for, you know, politically, we have uh, more fans at trackside in at the British Grand Prix, but um, it's not really working. So let's see a change of tack regarding that. Uh, Sonkiat Tranchera, he's withdrawn this week. Uh, he got run over, his foot run over by Audiger, Fermin Audiger, and he came together Um on a first lap incident and and he's withdrawn now. So that's a, that's a, a great shame. You mentioned, you know, team Asia. Um, well, some cat's been part of that set up for some time. Just as an aside, I mean, you, you talked about it earlier. I mean, you, you, I mentioned that the, the Japanese riders and the, the, the on the team Asia people, they mentor the, the Japanese. You see all these kids that turn up on a bus and they all walk in a very orderly line to, Go and watch the riders out on the track performing them, and and they're, they're like I say, they're spoken to by Ayogura or, or Taka or, or or some cat to some extent, um, you know, and encouraged in. I love to see it. We don't see that anywhere else, where sort of the, the main names are involved with the, with the, the kids on their um, <clears throat> their races. They're racing in the, 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 the on the team Asia type in the Mitsu Cup or whatever it is. I can't remember now, um, but. They're being mentored by the top guys, which um, I'd like to see more of that around the world. I suppose you do, Definitely. really, don't you? If you get well, in yeah. Italy with, with Valentino, the, 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 the ranch and stuff like that. So it's, um, it's, it's probably nice only... It's nice when you um, see people being able to give back into the sport that's yeah. obviously helped them so much, right? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing to see. We should see more of it, and we should cover more of it as well. We'd be able we to see more should. of where these guys are coming from, these youngsters. Definitely. Well, if you guys want to hear more about us talking about some of the lower categories, you can let us know in the comments below. Before we move on to my favorite predictions, let's just quickly touch on Jake Dixon because you mentioned him there. Obviously, when was his last win? Was that in Mazzano? <laughs> Hang on a second. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, sh- I should have known this, but I didn't. I didn't think about it. When was Jake's last win? So it's been a little while, but he's had a good run. It was Aragon. Come on, Keith. Aragon. It was Aragon. There we- Sorry, Aragon. Yeah. 
Coming into these flyaway rounds, obviously this is where it starts to get tricky because you know you're traveling so much. They're at the end of a triple header. They're in a different time zone. You, especially for the younger grade riders, might not have the most comfiest travel, plane seats, everything like that. For Jake coming into these rounds, and especially Japan, how do you think he's going to go this weekend? I would think he spent his time in the pool at Lombok. So he's had a week um, of, of very nice sunning himself. He'll be in the right frame of mind for it. I mean, like Jake, I don't see Jake as a, I don't think Jake has trouble, tr trouble traveling. I think it's a, a situation where most of these riders now, they get off the plane and they're, they're, they're ready for it. You know, pretty much it's, um, you don't get the kind of party situation like you used to. You know, we touched on that on the Patreon live that we did the other day. You know, you don't see Kenny Roberts in the corner of a bar standing on his head trying to drink a pint of beer uphill um, anymore. <laughs> um, but I bet you've just, got photo evidence of that, haven't you? <laughs> well, the unfortunate thing, and this, this just really shows my age, is that you didn't have mobile phones that took pictures and stuff back then. So <laughs> you didn't have the opportunity, social media, which is probably another reason why you don't get those antics anymore either, because they're all recorded by everybody, you know, and, and that makes it pretty difficult for, um, for the media to pick up on stuff like that. And pretty difficult for the guys that are performing. You know, some of the, the, the antics I've seen that are on my phone, sometimes I go through them and think, God almighty. And that, that was in modern day times, you know, Bury Ram, you know, I've got pictures from Bury Ram that would would absolutely curl their hairs on the back of your hand up um, from 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 riders climbing out of one window in a moving car over the roof and coming in the other window. Oh, no. <laughs> it's it's um it, it, they, these guys know how to party at the end of the day. We only see the homogenized version from um, from from racing uh, and the like, but uh, there there are, there are one or two in that. Uh, actually, that was, uh, I think that was one of the television crew, actually, now I think about it. It was a former rider. <laughs> Is that okay then? Right. Well, you've heard Keith mention before about our live stream on Patreon. So I'm just going to say this now, guys, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can click the link below to chat or check out our Patreon where you can come and watch us film a podcast and live and actually get to speak to our guests as well. So if you want to know more about that, click the link below to learn about our Patreon. But Keith, before we sign off, can you give us a sneaky look at your predictions for this weekend? Yeah, tricky, isn't it? Okay, um, I'm going to have, I think I'm going to have in the sprint, I'm going to push the boat out and say Acosta, Jorge Martin, Mark Marquez. Wow, okay. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> but I have. Um, then I'm going to go Peco, Jorge Martin, Mark Marquez for the GP. Hey, who do you think is going to get pole? Oh, hang on, no, 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 hang on a minute. I was going to put oh. Mark Marquez in with a win. I'll have Mark Marquez as a win in the in the Grand Prix in the main race. Yeah. Um, then Peco, then Jorge. Then Jorge. There you go okay. for the GP. But then your sprint Acosta, Jorge Peco. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, Marquez. Acosta, Jorge, Jorge Peco, Marquez. Yeah. Okay, well, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> Keith is calling it. Pedro Acosta is going to take his maiden MotoGP Grand Prix win yep. this weekend. But you've got to predict as well, because <laughs> I noticed that somebody, somebody got a little bit upset the other day when Amy didn't actually put her prediction out there. It's <laughs> not that there's a ban on females putting predictions out, so you better <laughs> you better give us yours as well. Okay. Um, I think... Going off what we say, going for it, yeah, it's hard to disagree with you, but I don't, <laughs> I don't quite know if Pedro is going to win this weekend. I'm going to go Jorge because he was so strong here last year. I'm definitely going to go Mark, and I'm going to put Acosta in third on the podium for the sprint for the Grand Prix. I think I'm going to have to go Jorge again. I'm going to go Peco second and Marquez third. So look, it I was think similar. I think no, I think yours are stronger than mine, but we'll see. Oh, I like that you've gone for the spicy option. So 
Look, you can let us know your predictions in the comments below, guys. Or if you're listening to us on our platforms, head over to our YouTube. That's where we're talking about all those comments. But that is it for us for the Japanese Grand Prix preview. If you can't get enough OMG MotoGP, then do check out our social channels at OMG MotoGP on all of the platforms. Or if you have a question for us, you can email us at OMG MotoGP at gmail.com. But from Keith and myself, we're going to be back real soon with more OMG MotoGP. Mm-hmm.